So I want to also now address the uh, parable of the 10 virgins. Okay. And listen, I'm not saying that the parable of the 10 virgins is like a bad thing. It's scripture. It, the parable of the 10 virgins is a wonderful parable. But many have used this parable incorrectly to seemingly illustrate a partial rapture and claim that some Christians will be left behind and some will be taken up in the rapture. Now, look, I believe that uh, most who misuse this parable are not doing it with ill intentions uh, to deceive people. But nonetheless, this issue uh, is very important to have clarity on. Very important. And again, I want to remind you the great dividing line. The one thing that separates eternity, the cross, Jesus Christ. That's it, okay? There's one thing. Keep that in your mind. So let's look at the parable, okay? Let's look at the parable of the 10 virgins. It's in Matthew 25, and we're going to read verses 1 through 13. And then we're going to go over it and break things down and use scripture. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. Your lamp goes out pretty quick, guys, if you've never used a lamp. If you just have a wick and no oil, the cotton just burns right up. You've got to have the oil. It says, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. OK, that's the parable. Now let's go over it and let's break things down. Now, first, let's talk about. What are the things that trip people up with this parable? It's always the same things. It's, it starts off the kingdom of heaven. Okay, that's one thing. Kingdom of heaven. And then the word virgins. The kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins. Those two things absolutely trip people up. And this leads some people to conclude that the whole group are Christians. However, this is not so. And I will show you why using scripture. This is not so. We are not talking about the whole 10 virgins all being Christians. Okay? It's not what it is saying. I'll show you why using scripture. Um, first of all, I want to ask you a question before we go further. Is someone a Christian um, uh, just by the fact that they claim to be one? Obama claimed to be a Christian. Barack Obama claimed to be a Christian. Is he a Christian? Because he claimed to be one? Are you a Christian because you live in the West or in a Western country? You know, it, those who are in the East... Uh, will we'll refer to the whole nation of America as the Christians, the West. Are you a Christian just because you claim to be one? Just because you're born in the West or whatever it is? Or is, it, is that what makes you a Christian? Or are you a Christian if you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ and thereby received the seal of his Holy Spirit? 
which remember happens when you place your faith in Jesus Christ and the gospel. Okay, so let's get into scripture and confirm this because we know that it's the latter. It's You're not Christian because you claim to be one. You're Christian if you placed your faith in Jesus Christ and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Scripture will confirm this for us right here. Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Jesus speaking. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Could stop right there. Not everyone who says I'm a Christian. Same thing. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Okay, there is a huge key word there. Did you catch it? The word never, never. What does Jesus say to these people? who say, Lord, Lord, I did all this stuff. Look at all this good stuff that I did. I call you Lord. I say I'm a Christian. I claim to be a Christian and I did all these good things. What does he say to these people? I never knew you. You were never mine. I never knew you. Not you, you, yeah, you used to be a Christian, but then you didn't perform good enough and I left you behind and kind of threw you away. No, he says, I never knew you. Not you used to be a Christian and now you're not. I never knew you. Never means never. You were never a Christian. There will be many people who will claim they are Christians and will even bring up their good works to God as proof that they're a Christian. But Jesus will say to those people, I never knew you. You were never a Christian. I never knew you. Folks, there is one thing that determines if you are a Christian. If you belong to Jesus, did you place your faith in Jesus? Or did you place your faith elsewhere in your good works? And the fact that you claimed to be a Christian. You were a cross necklace. You had a cross ring. You had a fish on your business card. You sat in a pew on Sunday. Nope, nope, nope. It's one thing, one thing only. Did you place your faith in Jesus Christ? Or did you place it elsewhere? In your cross necklace, your good works? Just one thing, one thing only. Jesus Christ. So Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father. Okay, that's pretty important. The one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Those are the ones who are truly his. Okay, so let's let's look at God's word then. We need to know what is the Father's will. That's very important because we want to get in. We don't want to be the guys told to go out, to be left out. John 6, verse 40. For this is the will of my Father, Jesus speaking. That everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Did you catch that? What is it? What's the will of the Father? To believe. To believe in Jesus. John 6, 28 through 29. Then they said to him, what must we do? Okay, because you, you might say, well, yeah, but Jesus said the one who does the will of my father. Well, Jesus says, John 6, 28 through 29, the disciples asked, then what they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him he has sent. That you believe in him who he has sent. That is what you need to do. 
to get in and to not be out. There's one thing that gets you in or puts you out. Did you place your faith in Jesus Christ or did you place it elsewhere? So let's go back and look over the parable of the 10 virgins again. We're going we're gonna to go through it a couple times here. We're going to do verse, so it's, it's in Matthew 25. We're going to do verse 1 through 4. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil. They had zero oil, nada oil, no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. Okay, stop right there. What's the difference between the two groups of virgins? There's one thing that makes the difference. The oil. What's the oil? It's the Holy Spirit. The oil is the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13, in him, well, well actually, I'm going to say this first. When do you get the Holy Spirit? Let me ask you this question. When do you get the Holy Spirit? Let's go back to the word and read it again. Ephesians 1.13, in him you also, when... You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Boom. So what appeared above the apostles? Think about this. What appeared above the apostles in the upper room when the Holy Spirit was poured out, when the Pentecost moment happened? Flames of fire. They looked like human lamps. We are the wick. The Holy Spirit is the oil and the fire. You will go out like that. You're dead and useless as a lamp without the oil of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit, the light of Jesus in you. If you don't have that, you're darkness. You're empty and you're useless. The Holy Spirit is the oil. Yeah, but it says, Tyler, it says, they're all virgins. They're all virgins. And we all know that since it says the word virgins, that means they're all Christians because it says they're all virgins and they're all in the kingdom of heaven. Guys, listen, it's not, you, you can't, fall for that logical fallacy. There are two groups in this 10 virgins parable. There's two groups. And the Bible shows us that there are two groups. I'll show you here in scripture. There are two groups in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And I'm going to give you a quick hint. When you draw a single dividing line, what do you get? When you draw a single dividing line, look at the chat. You get two groups, one on either side. That's your hint. Okay, so let's go and, and let's look at some other scriptures and we'll show you there are two groups in the kingdom of heaven. We're not, not talking. This, this parable about the 10 virgins, since it says the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins, that is not saying we're talking about a group of people who are all Christians. That's not what it's saying. There's two groups, two groups in the kingdom of heaven. So we'll, we'll go to scripture and confirm this. Never take my word for anything. Go to scripture. Never take anyone's word. Go to scripture. Test all things by scripture. Test all teachers by scripture. Confirm all things by scripture. So Matthew 13, 24 through 30 says, he put another parable before them, Jesus, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. 
But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, there were weeds that appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, an enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, then do you want us to go and uh, gather them? But he said, no, lest in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, let's read some more scriptures. And I'm going to break some, some of this down after I get done reading these scriptures. Matthew 13, 36 through 40. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain to us this parable of the weeds in the field. And Jesus answered. So Jesus is going to tell you what it means. The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, Jesus. Jesus is the one that sows the good seed. Verse 38. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. Okay, stop right here. Do you understand what this means? The kingdom of heaven is the world. The world. And there's two groups in it. There's the sons of the kingdom, the good seed, and there's the sons of the evil one. Two groups in the kingdom of heaven, which is the world, the entire world. <clears throat> and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Also, Matthew 13, 47 through 48, Jesus speaking. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So there were two categories, good fish and bad fish. Okay, let me ask you, how many groups of seed were there? Two. How many groups of fish were there in the kingdom of heaven? Two. What is the one thing that divides all of eternity into two groups? Jesus. Jesus. What is the one thing that decides which side of eternity you are on? Did you place your faith in Jesus Christ or did you place your faith elsewhere? And by the way, when it talks about gather the uh, gather the weeds first and bind them and throw them into the fire and then bring my, the weed into my barn, this is talking about the end of the age. Okay, the end of the age is the end of the, the age that we're in, and then the beginning of the new age starts at the millennial kingdom. So the end of the age is at the end of the tribulation period. The rapture is not being spoken about in these scriptures here in Matthew 13, it's, it, the, the rapture is not revealed in clarity at this point when Jesus is preaching. What Jesus is preaching about is the full harvest is complete at the end of the tribulation period. Because remember, there is a lot of people who are going to come to faith in Jesus by hearing the gospel during the tribulation period. We, believers in Christ, will not be here for the tribulation period because we're raptured first before that entire tribulation period. But there's still more of our brothers and sisters in Christ who will come to faith during the tribulation period. So when Jesus is talking about the end of the age here, he's talking about the end of the tribulation period. And at that point, what does he do? When Jesus comes back at the end of the tribulation period, raptures already happened seven years ago. When he comes back at the end of the tribulation period, he binds up the wicked and the, and the evil, throws them away, and he uh, brings the wheat into the kingdom, the millennial kingdom. 
Okay. I want to make that point clear in, in case you got confused on that. But the main point here is there's two groups and that the kingdom of heaven is the entire world. And there's two groups in it. There's the good, the good ones and the bad ones. Did you place your faith in Jesus Christ or did you place your faith elsewhere? Okay. So let's take one last look at the parable of the 10 virgins and we'll understand things clearly. Okay. Then the kingdom of heaven, remember that's the entire world. That doesn't mean the Christians. It means the entire world, the kingdom of heaven, will be like 10 virgins. And there's two groups to these 10 virgins. They will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. And when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. They did not have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, remember, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit when you hear the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and you believe in Jesus Christ. These foolish virgins, virgins took no oil with them. They represent those who did not place their faith in Jesus Christ. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. They had the Holy Spirit in them. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. You know, there was a time, I just thought about this. There was a time in human history, many thousands of years ago, when mankind knew, mankind knew there was a God. They, they all knew there was a God. But it's been many thousands of years, or in the eyes of the Lord, many days. Just a few, uh, the, 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 with the Lord, a thousand years is as a day, the Bible says. And mankind has fallen asleep, and we've forgotten about God. We've totally pushed God out of our lives, out of our schools, out of our governments, and we've completely forgotten about him. The Lord has delayed it seems like he's been away for a long time. We've all fallen asleep and kind of forgotten about him. But what happens? It says at midnight, there was a cry. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. That's happening now. That's happening now. God is shaking the bride awake, shaking the world awake. He's saying, I'm coming soon. Go out to meet him. Jesus is coming soon. Here's the bridegroom. The rapture's soon. He's coming soon. Wake up. Trim your lamps. Wake up. That's happening now. It's midnight now. Late in the hour. The hour is late. Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out. Yeah, that happens really fast. A lamp does not last long. A wick does not burn long with no oil. Burns out like that. There's nothing in there to keep it going. No Holy Spirit. But the wise answered saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. Remember, they would be buying, selling, planting, and building, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day. That's what the Bible says. While they are saying peace and security, sudden destruction will come, and they will not escape. But you are not children of the darkness. You are children of the light. How do you have light? If you have the oil, if you have the Holy Spirit, that's how you have the light. You are children of the light. You won't be caught off guard. But it says, what does it say about the foolish virgin, virgins? It says, while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. We're going up in the rapture to the marriage feast. That's what we're going to. It starts at the rapture and it culminates at the second coming. Jewish wedding was seven days of feasting. 
there's a lot of typology there. We could do a whole nother video on that. They went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. These are the people saying, hey, wait a minute. I, I went to church. I had a cross necklace. I had a fish on my business card. I gave a bunch of money to the missionaries. How come I didn't get raptured? Lord, Lord, open to us. Verse 12, but he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus is coming very soon. And there's two groups. There's those ones who will be taken and those who will be left. There's those who place their faith in Jesus Christ and those who placed it elsewhere, placed their faith elsewhere. This parable of the ten virgins is not teaching that some Christians will be left behind. The five foolish virgins are not Christians. They may, they may have called themselves Christians. They may have worn a cross necklace and they may have gone to church. They are not Christians and they did not enter because of one thing. Remember, there's one thing that separated the two virgins, the ones that had oil and the ones that didn't. They did not have the oil of the Holy Spirit, which is given at the moment of true belief in Jesus Christ. So here is my plea for everyone listening to this video. There's one thing that will decide your eternal destiny. Did you place your faith in Jesus Christ or did you place your faith elsewhere in yourself in your world in your mo in the money in some false god in many false gods there's only one way there's only one truth and there's only one life jesus christ and except by him and through him no one enters heaven no one comes to the Father, Creator, Lord God, only through Jesus. Place your faith in Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 through 10, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So guys, listen. I'm praying for you. I love you. Jesus loves you, most importantly. And I just want, I hope that you understand how important this is. There's one thing you got to get right. In your life, if you did everything wrong, no matter how late it is, you could be on your deathbed like the thief on the cross was. There's, if you're still breathing, there's one thing that you have got to do that will decide which side of eternity you are on. Did you place your faith in Jesus Christ, in his atoning blood for your sins? Or did you place your faith elsewhere? And that means anywhere else other than Jesus. That is what will decide your eternity. That is the one thing that separates eternity into two groups. So guys, I love you. Um, I'm so thankful that the Lord um, gave us his word and that uh, we can come together as brothers and sisters in Christ and talk about these things, encourage each other in these things. Guys, be excited. Jesus is coming very soon. The rapture is coming very soon. There's one thing, just like I've been saying the whole time, there's one thing 
that scripture says, the Bible says, will decide whether or not you go in the rapture? Did you place your faith in Jesus Christ or did you place it elsewhere? If you have believed in Jesus Christ, if you've placed your faith in him and you've been sealed with his Holy Spirit, you're going in the rapture. It's a package deal, guys. It's not performance-based. It's faith-based. And praise God for that, because it was if it was performance-based, I wouldn't be going, and you wouldn't be going. Nobody would be going. Jesus would be showing up in the clouds and being like, where is everybody? Nobody's here. Because nobody could make it if it was performance-based. It's faith-based. All right, guys. God bless you. I love you. I normally don't ask this, but please share this message. I believe that this is a word that really needs to reach many people. There's a lot of people who are walking in deception or in darkness in this area. And there's a lot of people who are lost in placing their faith in many things other than Jesus. And so my goal from now until I die or until Jesus calls us up at the rapture, which I believe is very soon, is that we bring as many people as possible to Jesus Christ and that as many people as possible hear the gospel. So uh, please share this message with people. And my goal is for God to be glorified in him alone, not me in any way, only the Lord. Oh, one thing I forgot. I want to mention this. Last note, I'm sure a lot of people have already signed off, but I want to just say it so that it's included in this video. Um, some people, re regarding the virgin thing, some people will say that this virgin, um, it can't be um, referring to the church at all, uh, that the 10 virgins, you know, the good ones can't be referring to the church. Some people will say that the bride of Christ is never called a virgin, uh, but that's not true. That's not scriptural. I want to show you uh, this scripture right here. He says, 2 Corinthians 11.2. This is Paul speaking. He says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So that is speaking about the bride of Christ. So again, I just wanted to include that because that was some, a note that I meant to bring up and I forgot about it uh, when I was talking about that uh, earlier in this video. So that is the last thing I had to say. God bless you and keep you and I'll see you next time.